Welcome to the Martial Arts of Business podcast series. All of our podcasts can be downloaded direct from the website at martialartsofbusiness.com or by searching the terms Martial Arts Business in iTunes. Now, here's your host, Sean Allen. Welcome to Podcast 6. This particular podcast is all about getting things done. Now, knowing the right action is just not enough, and I think we all know that. So knowing how to create students, write curriculum, improve your service, that's just not enough. Action is the king. I mean, if you are identifying an area of improvement in your business, the tip is complete it to the hundredth percent mark. Here's an example. If you if you have created a phone script for inquiries, do it completely, which means create the phone script, train your staff, leave a copy next to the phone, then, and probably most importantly, timetable two things on a regular basis. One is staff meetings to revise the phone script itself to see how it's going, to get some feedback from your staff. And that would probably happen, a good example would be three or six monthly. And the second thing is to do monthly statistical reports on your desk to indicate the performance of that particular area of your system. Now, to tell you the truth, quite often, I think a lot of people, martial arts instructors, dojo owners, they know what to do. They know how to market. They know how to draw up a phone script. But it's just not done to the 100th percent mark. So all you have to do is get a, a commitment to your commitment. You just need to commit to finishing, completing the whole thing off, then leaving it to work by itself. Here's a final note before I move on to the next area. It's something I've noticed with visiting five martial arts academies in the last week. What I've noticed is this. The size of the martial arts studio has nothing to do with the quality of life of the owner. I mean, the big question is, how do you measure quality of life? Is it, is it the financial stability of the school? Is it the enjoyment of the owner and what he does? Is it the number of hours that he or she does? Look at it this way. The quality of life of the owner is completely reliant on the amount of self-discipline that the owner has. For example, you could have a thousand students and have time free to do whatever you like. You could have a hundred students and be completely overworked and losing dollars. So the discipline is in having regular habits. Think about this. We didn't need discipline to get to the lofty heights of martial arts ability that we now enjoy. We trained year after year because we enjoyed it. If we hated it, then that would have taken discipline to get to that level. So discipline is not needed. It's all about creating habits. And my advice? Well, it actually comes from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And quite often, an instructor's advice to a student who's in a problem spot is to move. For example, a student might be trapped underneath their opponent. The instructor will say, well, what can you move? Can you move your hips? Can you move your shoulders? I mean, if your hips are pinned to the floor, quite often you can move your shoulders or your feet. If your shoulders are pinned to the floor, quite often you can move your hips. Well, whatever you can do, then you move that. Then an interesting thing happens after that. The dynamics between you and and your opponent change, and new opportunities open up. Life is just the same. If you do nothing, the situation usually gets worse. As promised in the previous podcast, here's the Shrek recording. It was recorded by me 
last year in Universal Studios in Singapore. I hope you enjoy it. Sometimes you need to step back from your business to see it clearly. Last week I was in Singapore and visiting Universal Studios on Sentosa Island. Amongst other things, I went on the Shrek ride. Let me explain this, then I'll show you the valuable lesson we can take in our role as a martial arts instructor. Now first of all, why did I choose this particular ride? Well the line was quicker and I must admit 4D interested me. Now 3D I understand, but 4D? So my choice was it was easy to join in and the product interested me. Now before we go any further, think about that. What's the comparison with your business? Is your product interesting and is it easy to join? Anyway, on with Shrek. There were four parts to the whole process. Number one was the lineup, and as I said before, that was moving pretty quickly. Number two was there was a walk through the castle, which was interesting because it felt like you're actually part of the Shrek movie, but all we were doing was just, it was an extension of the line. Then there was like a short, probably 15 minute orientation or introductory session where we were talked through about what to expect in the movie and then there was the actual movie which was about 15 minutes now as I said each section was about 15 minutes now here's the interesting part in each group because I counted the number of seats in the theater there are about 500 people and they were all operating simultaneously as there were people in the line outside another group was walking through the castle and another group was having the introductory session and another group was in the movie so that's simultaneously. So each took about 15 minutes and there's 500 people in a group. That's, that's 2,000 people in an hour. Now, why am I mentioning all of this? Well, a martial arts academy is the same. Number one, our product is interesting. And if it's not, you've got to make yours interesting. And number two, we've got to make it easy to join. Now, once you join a school or once a student joins your school, the process is the same. There's an introductory procedure, whether you have them come into a class or a private one-on-one -on -one or whatever, then you usually tell them about what's next. You, you educate them, and quite often this is called edutainment, which is a cross between education and entertainment. And finally, there's all the stages of martial arts, and we need to automate this, which means you get it down pat. You, you teach first and then enable others to do as you're doing. Now, by the way, 4D. Well, 3D I know, and so do you. You know, you put those glasses on and it looks like you're actually part of it. Well, they added a fourth dimension. For example, in Shrek, as you know, there's a donkey. And the voice is, of course, who is it? Eddie Murphy. Quite often in the movie presentation, the donkey sneezes. There's a little jet on the back of the chair in front of you. As the donkey sneezes, it shoots a fine line of water towards your face. So as he sneezes, it feels like he's sneezed in your face. And of course, everybody in the theater screams. There was a horseback ride in the movie. The seats moved like you're actually on a horse. And in one part, there was spiders crawling everywhere on the screen and little jets of air from under the seats hit you on the back of the legs and it feels like spiders. Everybody screams again. Now, that extra dimension is what can separate you from all other choices that people have with their time. For example, imagine you have to teach your martial arts class how to duck under a swinging right punch. Now, you could get out there and demonstrate it, which makes them appreciate what it looks like. But I must admit, Sometimes in my classes, I would get out a video, very short, of Mike Tyson ducking underneath a big swinging right punch and hitting his opponent with a left hook and annihilating his opponents. And as you know, that happened quite often. So then I would just demonstrate it and the interest of the students was at an all-time high. Now later on, I had instructors do it. I'd say to them, show the DVD, demonstrate it, get them to practice and they had the same result so now it's time for you to get to work
This podcast's marketing idea. Our aim is to start to get a handle on this whole idea of social networks. Well, in the long-term aim of yourself in trying to spread the good word about your academy or your gym is to constantly put your product before the eyes of the consumers. The only thing you really own is your database. The aim, for instance, of Old Choose, probably the most powerful social network at the moment being Facebook, I'll choose Facebook. The aim of Facebook is to make people look at your website and then from then to transfer them into either a buying customer or to your database. Now, here's a warning. Facebook is a social network. Don't sell stuff in a social network. I mean, you wouldn't go to a party and give out brochures or start walking around from group to group and saying, here's my business card, I'm a kickboxing instructor. So the rule is, number one, give away free stuff on Facebook, like photos or a chapter of an e-book you may have done or information on helping someone through a certain situation or you might even ask a question and seek responses back from all the listeners. Maybe even show a portion of your class. And you could put it up on YouTube and link it into Facebook. But the whole idea is keep it short. I would say 30 seconds. The main aim is to keep people thinking about you. And you should be constantly trying to add people to your Facebook page and to your site's database. And the final thing is to stay in touch on a weekly basis. And remember, keep your contacts to everybody relatively short. In the long run, The larger your database is of people who are in front of you all the time, once you make an offer, the larger is the chance that you will have the phone ring. This podcast's question and answer section comes from a gentleman, a couple of people as a matter of fact, but one main one in Perth and Western Australia, who is asking me about employing someone. I've taken him through these basic two areas. The first area is looking at his affordability. We're looking at the number of students he has on his floor on a regular basis, how much they're paying, and obviously how much he's going to have to pay for an instructor. The first thing is to be able to enroll the instructor in the dream of working full time. You can then look at him focusing on increasing the student numbers and possibly even increasing the income of the club so that he can become a regular part of the paying staff. Once those two areas are in his mind, it'll be a lot easier to be able to get him to focus on those actual jobs which contribute to larger numbers of students and therefore larger numbers of income. That makes sense, doesn't it? So the next step is once you've said, right, we need, we're at 200 students now, and we need 260 five to be able to have your work full time so once you've focused him on saying okay we need 265 students we're at 200 now we need an extra 65 students and therefore we need an extra six thousand five hundred dollars a month in income for you to become employed full time that is a tangible goal the next thing is the two of you cook up a game plan how do we add 65 members to our database and then you gradually increase his income based on that growth for instance you could say look i'm going to give you an extra hundred dollars per one thousand dollars of income into the club or something like that the next level you have to focus on is once he actually starts you have to be able to provide a whole job structure similar to when you started but it was all in your head so you have to have a written position description describing what is entailed in his position and then you have to look at the management of his career there are three areas that most people usually concentrate on when they're looking at a job number one is how much they're going to be paid number two is how much they're going to enjoy it and number three is what hours do they have to work If you have any more questions of any of those three areas, just email me direct through our website and I'll send you as much information as I possibly can. 
If you would like any more information about the content that we have discussed today, just email me direct through our website. I'll even send you my internet work flow chart that I use, which explains how I use Facebook and all of the different methods to be able to get the message about, out about the Martial Arts Academy. Just send me a request via our website and I'll email it direct to you. Also, our ebook Martial Arts of Business is available on the site, so check out the free chapter in there. In the meantime, train hard and I'll see you next time.